Hi there, Kelly here. We're here for Gallery Night Providence at the AS220 Aborn Gallery, 95 Empire Street, for the study for the gallery Collisions and Encounters. So here we go on inside. Hello. 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 Welcome. Welcome to the Aborn Gallery everyone. Uh, my name is Nafis White. I'm one of the artists and also the curator for this particular exhibition called Collisions and Encounters. And it features the work of Emily Leach, Sabrina Clark, and then also myself. Uh, so I'm very happy to walk you through uh, some of the um, ideas, you know, that came about for this exhibition, uh, walk you through the work, um, and encourage you, of course, to make an appointment with Neil Walsh, at AS220 Galleries and come through for yourself and experience the work. Um, so we can start, we can actually just start by looking at the room as a whole. Um, this particular show is happening during the COVID era. You know, it is happening um, as we are traversing these new landscapes and really thinking about identity, thinking about belonging, thinking about accumulation, um, thinking about emergence and how does one emerge, um, you know, with all the precarity of what is happening right now. Um, how do you keep yourself well? How do you keep yourself inspired? And how do you keep in communication with others? And so I reached out um, to black women and wanted to be in conversation with them um, here in this space and in this uh, town and talk about where they are um, and where we are, you know, where we are as a people, where we are in our individual practices, um, where we are in the world, where we are day to day, um, you know, and how are we even able, you know, um, with all the uh, tumult, you know. So we can begin. Um, there are three different works uh, present in this particular exhibition. We have Sabrina Clark represented here. Um, with a large structure, which we will go and investigate. Um, we move onto the floor over here. These are some of my works. Um, and a Sabrina's, by the way, is um, Faith in My Faith is the title of that, Faith in My Faith. This particular work um, is called All In After Tony Fair. Um, and I'll get more into that. So it's a piece that's in homage, but has a lot to do with my own personal art practice. And then here um, we have Emily Leach and this piece is called Untitled, uh, part of the Remainder series. And so what Emily is doing is creating actually these lanterns uh, that project uh, slides from very specific time periods. And recently what she's been doing is looking at uh, photography that was taken during um, another particular era of Spanish flu. So, you know, we're bringing in, you know, past is present. Uh, but to come back to Sabrina's, perhaps we can have a, a closer look. Uh, and I do want you all to consider the circle, uh, consider the cycle as we move through and just see where that comes up. Uh, so with Sabrina, this particular structure, it's extremely hefty. Uh, she has taken the time to weld um, all of the ends and fabricate this out of incredibly heavy lumber. She has also taken the time to uh, decorate. So the decorative is something that we're seeing here as well and create a very beautiful, um, cozy sanctuary for herself as she moves through um, her practice. Now, usually she's a sculptor. Um, and so usually she's in the midst of figurative work. She also has been doing a lot of house building lately, which is why you're seeing some of these materials. Um, but she's also taking time now, especially during this particular era, to self-actualize, um, to take time for meditation, to take time to think about process, to take time to think about where in our bodies, you know, are we feeling things. So to come closer, um, one thing, again, with the circle that you'll see, um, you'll see it here with her watercolor works and how, you know, each day there's a different setup, you know, they'll come in and work through uh, different processes. We'll look at some of the watercolors. But then if you look up at the ceiling, um, you see that there is also a basically a construction that creates a painting and a projection down where they would be laying. 
So what is it about that kind of, um, you know, mosaic, that kind of, you know, beautiful resonance, that kind of light, that kind of color and, um, and also a projection, right? Using the gallery light to shine through. How does that also engage one's energy and one's core? So we can also come over and take a look at some of where Sabrina has traversed. Uh, as we're looking, you'll note, and this wall will continue to be filled with accumulation. Um, where are they? You know, where in their body are they feeling things? What is being accentuated? What are the colorways that are really coming forth? I mean, here we're really looking at skeletal structure and this kind of murkiness that is like seeping through, you know, what is that about those energies? Where is it, you know, leading up to, you know, and we can think about how we feel when we wake up. How do we feel midday? How do we feel when we get different news? Um, you know, how do we feel about different changes within family, within relationships? Uh, and so also kind of these halos that are surrounding, I think are really quite beautiful as well. Um, you know, thinking about auras, thinking about spirituality and deep connection to self, you know. So these are some of the places in which um, she is she's moving through. And I think that also for somebody who is incredibly proficient in sculptural work, carpentry, uh, this is a very exciting uh, shift, you know, because when do we turn the lens on ourselves? When do we take the time to really stop and when do we make ourselves a sanctuary where there's safety, where we can be somewhere um, and be shrouded by quiet and by peace um, to investigate these very deep connections that we have with self and also with others? Um, I will tell you, Sabrina is a dynamic member of the community here um, and has uh, so many people that they advocate for, work with, lift up and so it's really wonderful um, you know I've, I have the luxury actually of uh, having an art studio in their uh, warehouse space and um, to see all the dynamic people that come through those doors and to see how Sabrina builds community um, it's also really wonderful that in that you know cacophonous joy and energy that is happening that they are able to you know create a space that's quiet create a space away from all of that you know, all of that, you know, energy and be able to, you know, kind of smooth it out for themselves, you know, take time. Um, we can move on to All In. So Tony Fair um, is, well, is, I mean, I say he's an ancestor now and he, uh, prolific uh, queer artist and would utilize things in his studio um, very unpretentiously, <laughs> you know, he would say, I have water bottles and blue dye. I'm going to create, you know, just hanging these pieces up and like create this beautiful landscape. Or uh, he has a piece also titled All In, which this is an homage to, where he utilized marbles and coins, just things that were laying around and just put them in a circle. Um, for me, as somebody who is queer identified, um, you know, it was very important to think about ancestry, think about um, the work that has come before, um, and think about what does it mean for things to be all in, you know? What does it mean for this accumulation? Um, for me, I am working through a lot of family work. I'm an adoptee, so I am simultaneously looking for family members, finding family members, um, and then also I have a very diverse family as well and my father's Italian, African-American, um, adoptive, that is, and my adoptive mother, Scottish and English, birth parents, um, my mother was Scottish, and a father, uh, African-American. And so, you know, as I've been learning how to love myself, I love all the different facets of myself, um, to learn how to care for my hair, um, so in my studio, all of a sudden comes all of these materials for it. Uh, so these are hair baubles. Um, and as I was coming up, uh, you know, the black women in my family started reaching out to me and spending time showing me how to do hair, um, how to care for mine. And the 
uh, you know, sharing of love in that way, that kind of embodied knowledge that is so present in the fingertips, you know, of our family members and their ancestors and their ancestors. Um, you know, I, I can't even articulate really, you know, how precious that time is. You don't need to say a word to know that you are deeply loved on, you know, on cellular levels um, that, that are just really powerful and moving. So in my studio, I sculpt, um, and I have quite a lot of different materials prioritize the transformation of those materials so they become something other than what they were. For me, I'm interested in accumulation, a painterly aspect of how to extract that joy and, you know, that innocence, you know, um, to interrogate in a way femininity, you know, um, because I feel that I oscillate very much between masculine and feminine. It's very much a part of how I move in the world. Um, so thinking about that also. Um, but I also want to evoke memories for others. I want people to think about, you know, what their relationship to some of these objects might be. Where have you gone? You know, what are your memories of these particular things? And what does it mean now that they are in circles or they are in conversations? You know, how do you isolate some of the colorways? What does that do? Um, you know, and um, so the transference really of energy and joy is um, part and parcel to the project. And also it just an homage of my queer ancestors. Right. So for Tony Fair, I, you know, he would not <laughs> necessarily, uh, you know, take these particular objects. But um, but I think he would delight, you know, in that continued conversation that moves into other communities. Right. Um, that speaks to, you know, uh, girlhood and womanhood and um, innocence and, you know, all of these things. So thematically, I think it can go a lot of places. Um, and it delights me every time that I set it up, you know. Um, and I think it's important to create art that feeds you. I think it's really important to allow yourself to play. And, you know, I am, I'm a serious artist, <laughs> you know. Uh, I am, you know, that's my career, that's what I do, that's my calling. And I know that that is one of the gifts that I give the world. And also with the work, it is important to play. Um, because if we do not allow ourselves some release and you know movement within these other realms then I think the work can become quite stagnant right so let us move on to Emily Leach's work um, Emily Leach is an artist out of Madison Wisconsin um, also a sculptor uh, and I think it's very interesting also how they're looking at history and interrogating history and bringing history into a parallel um, with what's happening now. When I mentioned that, you know, she was collecting archival slides, um, specifically of other pandemics, you know, what is that um, about, you know, having that kind of information? We may not know from looking at this um, that that was taken during that time, you know, that that has a relationship with this particular moment. Um, but, you know, the fact that conceptually it does, you know, when I look at this image, I think of accumulation, I think of, you know, an ornate structure, I think of spirituality, we're moving into something that's, you know, church or church-like, it's encumbered, it's covered uh, with, with vines that have not actually obstructed entirely. So in some ways, I see the stained glass as being a, a well of hope, a beacon, a light, you know, that can still transmit, you know. And so in some ways, when we think maybe about the social and political atmosphere right now, all of the news, the election is coming. By the way, that's my birthday is November 3rd, so pray for me <laughs> that, that, that the news is the news we want. Um, <laughs> and if not, it'll keep us, you know, active, right? Um, you know, defending uh, humanity in all the ways that we do, um, as Toni Morrison so eloquently says, you know, it's a time we come alive and we must, it is urgent. Um, but when I see this accumulation, you know, I think about like all of that chatter, all of that, you know, being overcome by all of the political stuff that's going on, um, you know, all, all of the, the loss of life. I mean, we, well, I shouldn't say we and project in that way, but I have not had in-depth conversations around the severity and depth of the loss of all of these lives at this moment with COVID. Um, or the people who have been impacted so much so we don't even understand or I don't even understand the amount of pain, uh, the amount of 
um, healing that has to happen, that people are or have been more susceptible to other ailments. Um, and it's, it's something that is a little bit kind of hidden, but it's all of this you know, energy and movement and how all of us have this one moment at this one time where we are all experiencing a similar thing. I mean, that as a thought is remarkable. So we have this energy, much like the slide that Emily um, wanted to share with us. You know, what is, what is the, you know, the remainder? Um, what's remaining? Um, we have a circle. We have a cycle. We have a light. We have a hope. There is a place, you know, the focus is right there. And so even with all the noise and the cacophonous and the calamitous and the disastrous, there is still a way to continue on that path um, and still evoke hope. There is still a light that comes through. And so I love how this particular work is, you know, kind of moves and then talks to these works, you know, all in. And this one in particular becomes very spatial, very you know, atmospheric, very kind of like, uh, for me at least, you know, um, uh, constellation-like and that there's all of this kind of whiteness is, you know, it's, is it comet? Is it, you know, there's kind of this spiritual energy that moves in. Also the presence of three, which to me is a divine number of completion. And then we move here and then we, you know, discover in Sabrina's powerful work um, you know, this gorgeous halo, this sacred halo uh, under which, you know, they are able to, um, you know, create, gain perspective, allow, be open, and that that is, you know, radiating all of that down onto the surroundings. So also stained glass. So in conversation with Emily back again. So this is kind of the, the thing that we're talking about in here are, you know, these collisions, um, you know, all of these things that are happening to all of us simultaneously, um, you know, even when one is in a Zoom meeting, <laughs> you know, there's so many things going on um, and how we are able to, um, how, because we are remarkable people, but to navigate all of these things, even despite the pressure, um, you know, these collisions, this chatter, um, but then how these encounters can still have a synchronicity, can still have a depth, can still have a love, can still, you can still see each other. And you still know that there is, in some ways, a higher calling, a higher purpose, and it keeps you crystalline in how to move towards that. So that is, you know, that's, that's why all three artists are in conversation. Um, and all of us at different age groups, I'm in my 40s, Emily's in her 30s, um, Sabrina's in their 20s. Um, so we have, you know, an intergenerational discussion happening here that is also really vital. You know, we are all apart um, and everyone's voice in this is urgent and matters. So. Oh, of course. See, I, I, get, oh, okay. I get excited. Well, <laughs> understandably so. Thank you so much. Um, back to you, Alyssa.